or left. Hello. Um, we'll get this one out of the way early doors. Um, last time you were booked to fight, it was going to be Lerone. Now you're both booked on the same fight card, but you're not fighting each other. Why is that? Because it seemed like a natural thing to just rebook it. If I'm honest, I'm not sure. Mm. Um, maybe the UFC are hoping that we can make a bigger fight in the future. Um, you know, maybe when we're both ranked, maybe it makes more sense. Maybe something like a main event in London next year. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it was the fight that I was asking for. You know, my manager put it forward and said, look, can we get this fight back on? Um, but, you know, it didn't obviously happen. You got Andre Feely. That's a, that's a, a banger of a matchup. And, uh, He's been in the UFC for, for almost 10 years. We just had him and he still clearly still has that fire in his belly. He wants to still achieve big things in the division. What do you make of him and, and his performances in, in, in the UFC over the course of that time? Mate, I'm a big fan of him. Um, you know, way before I even was in the UFC, you know, I was watching him. Um, very talented, you know, very skillful fighter. He's a bigger name than uh, Lerone, who I was matched with originally. So... You know, that always helps as well. You know, I should get more out of this win than I would um, fighting other people. So, um, yeah, it comes to scrap. I like that. But I do believe that I'm better in all areas. You know, that's no disrespect to him. I think he's a very talented fighter and he's very game. And he, as you say, you know, he's been there 10 years and it's hard to get in the UFC and it's harder to stay. So the fact that he's been here this long um, just shows how talented he is. So, you know, a win over him will be uh, good on my CV. I think probably geographically, you are, of all the people on the UFC roster, the one that lives the closest to the O2 Arena. So how much does it mean to be able to, because there's been a couple of fights where you were due to fight here, they fell through. How much will it mean to actually get out there in the O2 and uh, start throwing hands in front of, front of friends, family, all the rest of it? It means everything to me. Um, it's added pressure. You know, I believe I'm the only UFC London fighter as well. So to to be the only one is, is, you know, it's added pressure on my shoulders, but I rise to that. You know, I perform better under pressure. So those added nerves, if you like, in, in performing in your hometown, that's, uh, it just helps me be a better athlete. And, you know, man, I'm not even staying at the hotel. You know, I walk my dog this morning. I get to go to bed with my fiance. So everything is luxury. You know, I'm spoiled. I'm literally got my home comforts and, you know, there's no better feeling than leaving your own house to go and do battle. So, uh, yeah, you know, expect the best Nathaniel Wood on Saturday night. You say that, expect the best Nathaniel Wood. What what can we expect from you in terms of evolution from the last time we saw you? What's 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 improved? What extra tools have you added to your game? And how's how different are you going to look on Saturday night? So I'm improving in all areas, obviously. You know, it's uh I never kinda specify in any area. I just I train everything. You know, I train grappling, I train striking, I do my MMA, everything's, you know, this mixed martial arts. But, you know, I do believe that my speed is going to be too much for these featherweights. Um, you know, I'm probably going to be the smallest, you know, maybe they're going to be stronger than me. Um, but, you know, I know for sure that they ain't going to be quicker than me and speed kills at the end of the day. So um, I look forward to having that advantage in uh, my arsenal. Give us a prediction for the fight, Matt. I'm picturing a second round TKO finish from myself. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Nathaniel, um, I saw some of the clips on, on social media of your interview with John Gooden uh, uh, recently, and um, you talked a little bit about, about OCD and, and diagnosis and all that. I just wondered if you could um, elaborate on how it's negatively impacted your, your career and what you've put in place recently to kind of deal with it better. So if I'm honest, it kind of works in my favor for my career because without kind of going real in depth, because it's, uh, you know, OCD is a puzzle. It's a big mystery, but there will be times on, I'm on the treadmill, let's say, doing sprints. And in my head, I've told myself that if I'm not going to do another sprint, I'm going to die or something's going to happen, you know. And uh, it's a real dark thing to live with. It messes your life up massively. But in regards to my training, it only improves. You know, if I'm ever having a day where, I feel like maybe I'm slacking. My OCD will say, <laughs> my coach actually winds me up with it now. It's a bit, it's a bit twisted of him, but he'll say, if you don't do another rep, you're going to lose your fight. So, you know, Brad actually said it to me on the Charles Rosa fight. He said, if you're ever late to this session, you're going to lose your fight. And best believe I was never late to that session again. So, um, 
yeah, it kind of works in your favor sometimes because you can kind of use it to better yourself if you like. But yeah, in regards to like just living, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not good. But, you know, in regards to training, it uh, helps me sometimes. In terms of that, if there's anyone that would, would watch this that does suffer with, with, with OCD, have you got any, uh, I don't know what you call it, like helping uh, tips, words of, of wisdom and, and how to deal with it better? Stay busy. Um, that's a big one for me because it's a, a struggle. It's a battle with yourself mentally. But if you're sitting in a room on your own, not doing anything, you know, you're just going to let your thoughts go away with you and you're just going to be arguing with yourself. So, you know, if you get out and you stay busy, it just distracts you. And that's for me what I found helped massively. I, I found that my worst times were when I was traveling an hour and a half to the gym on the train on my own, an hour and a half back, wouldn't read a book, didn't take music. That's when I think I was at my worst. But obviously, as I started to understand that, you know, I take a book. So on the train, I try not to think, you know, I try to focus my mind on stuff so that, you know, I don't kind of let my OCD and anxieties go away with me. Um, so yeah, my best advice would be if you haven't got someone, talk to someone first. You know, I'm always luckily I've got good family around me. But if you haven't, you know, I'd definitely say go and talk to someone. And then after that, just stay as busy as you can mentally. And in terms of the fight uh, win on, over Andre Feely, obviously, if you've mentioned big name, does that get you a ranked opponent next? Do you think? I mean, featherweight's very stacked division. Where, where do you think you'll put afterwards? So obviously, depending how you win, um, if I put a good performance in and get a good win, which I intend on doing, I'd like to think that I'm ranked um, after that. If I'm not, then yeah, you know, I'm going to be calling for the rank guys. I have got guys in my head that I already want to fight after. Um, so, you know, get this win and then uh, I've got a few names to call out. And there's been a, a lot of featherweight goat chat recently, whether that's a good discussion, bad discussion, I, I don't know. But do you put Volk as, as the goat or Aldo or Max or, or do, you, do you not really partake in those conversations really? I'll definitely say that Aldo's the goat because he's retired. He's the greatest of all time. But Volkanovski, I believe, is going to take that title. So, um yeah, you know, it's exciting to be in a division that has got the pound for pound number one guy currently at the moment. Thanks very much, mate. Best of luck. You're welcome. Thank you. Nathaniel just here. Um, there was a little bit of a run-in with Lerone Murphy this week at the hotel. Can you talk a little bit about what happened? Uh, yeah, so if I'm honest, that, you know, I think the, the social media said it was heated. That wasn't heated. That was really calm from me. Um <coughs> But yeah, we just had a few words, a little bit of a conversation, if anything, or maybe like a heated debate. I guess we still just disagree, but it might just be one of those where we're just going to have to agree to disagree and move on because nothing really kind of went anywhere with that conversation. I think, you know, it was just one of those we all passed each other and, you know, I guess you've got to say something. And he come up to me first. Um, I didn't even see him until I turned around. He was walking through the hotel lobby. Um but yeah, you know, it was a a heated debate, if you like. But uh, yeah, there wasn't really too much to it, to be honest. And there were a lot of words exchanged between you two, both on Twitter as well before. Is there a little bit of animosity between you two? So that's where things did get heated, you know. Um, and it all stemmed from something that I said where I think I put was looking to put a masterclass on for this fight. Guided it didn't happen. Hope I can get it rearranged or whatever. And he took it personally, obviously, and, and then it added me. And then it just kind of went back and forth from there. So it started from zero, ended up at 100. Um, and I guess, you know, what do you do with that? Because, yeah, I said things to him that, you know, are very offensive to him. He said things to me that are very offensive. You know, he said things to me that, you know, people were telling me I could go and speak to lawyers about, but I'm not obviously going to do that. Um, but I think it just got over it escalated you know i think it kind of started from nothing and i think deep down he knows that as well you know it's uh if i'm honest i wish him all the best do you know what i mean obviously if we end up fighting great i'm gonna try and knock him out whether we're friends or whether we're not um but i've i'm not losing any sleep over it you know so i wish him all the best this saturday hopefully he gets the win i get my win and you know if we can match up in the future and fight then so be it thank you nothing just don't know uh, in preparation to this fight, I've heard your coach, Ash, Grims Ash Grimshaw, saying how much you've been badgering him about getting your black belt. 
Um, is that somewhere in this fight you feel you've got a big advantage over Philly? Um, yeah, I definitely think I'm the better grappler. Um, I feel like people put me down as a striker because I prefer to strike. If I'm honest, I just like to entertain. And I know people want to see knockouts. They want to see strikers. But, mate, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for 14 years. You know, obviously, I specialize in no gi, hence why I haven't got my black belt. Um, and if I put the gi on now, I'd probably get tapped out to white belts. But, you know, when it comes to no gi, I'm a high-level grappler. Um, but for me, that's plan B. You know, if things go wrong, go to the ground. You know, I feel like striking is my primary weapon. That's what I enjoy the most. And, you know, a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. So when I'm in that octagon, you know, I like to be enjoying myself and having a good time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.